Turn your paper over. Make a list of some things that you don't know about whales, but you'd like to find out. Okay. I'm John Silver, Washington State Parks Foundation. I'm so happy to be here on San Juan Island, Washington State, at Lime Kiln Point State Park. And today, we're going to show you killer whales. This killer whale program is part of an educational series which shows you a whole suite of educational experiences at Washington State Parks to show the best that state parks have to offer, to give thousands of kids a chance to see the parks virtually, learn about them, get inspired, and hopefully someday come out here and see them for yourselves. Now this program is brought to you by the Washington State Parks Foundation, the Peach Foundation, many private donors, and the satellite company GCI, Polycom, VisionNet. It's coordinated by Allie and Kathleen at Inspired Classroom, and we're just so fortunate to have, to have here today Mr. Jeff Hogan, the executive director of Killer Whale Tales. He's given his life to killer whales, and we're so happy he's here. And to tell us about the park, we're fortunate to have Erin Cora here, who's scanning the water with her binoculars. And she's going to tell us about Lime Kiln Point State Park. Take it away, Erin. Well, thank you, John. This is a really wonderful day to have you guys in the park. And I wanted to see if you can see the lighthouse right behind me. And also across the water, this is the Harrow Strait. And 10 miles away, that's Vancouver Island. That's in British Columbia, Canada. We can see some boats out there. And the lighthouse is actually almost 100 years old. So we're going to be having a wonderful centennial celebration in just a couple of years. So hopefully you guys can come out. You're all invited. Just a little bit about what we're seeing outside there. Side, we see the Harrow Strait just a, a, about 50 feet off the shoreline. It drops down 900 feet. Can you guys imagine 900 feet? That's actually three Statues of Liberties stacked on top of each other. So it goes really deep there, and that's why we have all the, critter, the cool critters coming along and um, why the whales like to come here to, to eat their fish. So we're going to actually hand it over to Jeff Hogan in just a second here, and he's going to teach you more all about the salmon and the orcas. Take it away, Jeff. Good. Are we good to go? I guess my microphone's on. Hey, I see people. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hi. Nice. Hey, do me a favor. If you can hear me, will you dab? Please go ahead and dab. If you can hear me. All right. Uh, good morning. Good morning. So thanks for joining us here at the park today. Uh, we've got a, a, a two-part program for you. So the first part of the program, I'm going to share with you some information about the whales that make their home here off the water off the park. After that, we're going to play a little game show. I'm going to give you a chance to answer some questions. Um, and earn some orca trading cards. And at the end of the presentation today, we'll even give you time to ask uh, questions about killer whales that maybe I didn't answer, or I've been listening to some of the teachers talking. It sounds like some of you have research projects going on. I'd be glad to answer your questions about killer whales to help you get your project going. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And if we can, we're going to flip over to a poster because, as you probably know, killer whales are found all around the planet. And no matter where you go, you're going to find two things people and killer whales. So let me show you a picture of all the different ecotypes of killer whales that you could find if you traveled the globe. All right, here it comes. It's coming, trust me. We've got little squirrels running the generator here. They're putting their little PowerPoint fingers together to get the picture up, there it is. Okay, so there's a picture of all the different types of killer whales you find around the planet. And if you look really closely at that poster, you'll say, wow, those whales actually all look a lot alike. But today I want you to be a scientist. Really look at it, because if you look closely, you can say, well, wait a minute, the whales are very different. Notice the shapes of the whales are different. The sizes, the lengths, the colors are different. And if you look at all the patches, you can notice that some have little eye patches, some have big eye patches, some have teeny, teeny, teeny eye patches. 
So we're not going to talk about all these different types of killer whales today. Instead, we're going to focus on the group that you're most likely to hear, see here at Lime Kiln State Park, and it's that group right there. Now, that group of killer whales has their own name. We actually call that group of killer whales Southern Resident Killer Whales. I want you to go ahead and think of these whales as their own country, their own state, their own team, their own tribe. They are their own group of whales, and they are unlike any other killer whales on the planet. And we've actually been studying them for a very long time. In fact, we've been studying them since the 1970s. Would you raise your hand if you fondly remember the 1970s? Couple of you? Sweet. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. All right. So what do we know about this group of whales? Well, um, we know... They're not the biggest killer whales on the planet, and they're not the smallest. So let me show you. I'll show you a picture of a male. Here comes the male. And then here comes the female. And if you look at him, you'll notice that, you know, he's quite a bit bigger than her. He's a little bit longer. So if you look at that picture, you'll notice the southern resident killer whales who make their home here at the park during the summer particularly. These guys, when they're full grown at age 20, the male's about 21 feet long. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, how long is 21 feet? Well, maybe later today, your teacher can have four or five of you lay on the ground head to toe. That would be about the length of a full-grown male. The females, when they're fully grown at age 15, they're only about 18 feet long. So that's about a three-foot difference. Is that a big difference? Actually, it's huge. Most whale species around the world, when the males and the females are this, uh, fully grown, they're the same size. Killer whales are different. The males, when they're full grown, are bigger than the females. So not only is he three feet longer, but look at the difference in the weight. He weighs somewhere around 9,000 pounds. The female could weigh somewhere around six. So that's a big difference. <laughs> so 3,000 pounds. So that's a lot. That's almost the weight of an automobile. Okay. So, yeah, a big difference, which means he's going to need more food than her. Next time you're driving down the highway and you see a truck like that, you can just point at it and say, uh, look, it's a, uh, it's a southern resident killer whale. Because that truck right there is about the size of a full-grown male. Okay, the biggest male out there right now, his name is L41. We also call him Mega because he's big, and that dude is actually like 24 feet long. So he's almost one person longer than the biggest male that we talked about earlier on average. We'll talk more about L41 in a minute. Okay, who cares about adults, right? You all love babies. So do me a favor, put your hands up like this. That's about the length of a baby killer whale the day it's born. And guess what? These animals weigh about 350 pounds the day they're born. Go ahead and raise your hand if you think you weighed about 350 the day you were born. One or two of you? Okay, I feel sorry for your mom. All right, what else do we know about these southern resident killer whales? We know that during the spring and summer and early fall, they're here at Lime Kiln State Park in Harrow Strait and around the San Juan Islands. But in the winter, we've actually seen them as far north as Alaska and as far south as California. We know these animals travel in large groups. So if you take a look at that picture there, that's a good group of whales. And of course, we call a group of whales a pod. And these southern resident killer whales spend their entire lives swimming with their moms. They never leave. So the reason they're probably doing that is not only do they have close family ties, but they also spend a lot of time helping each other catch all the food they need. And speaking of food, this type of killer whale only eats fish. Okay? They love salmon. They really love Chinook. Say, um, Jeff, how do you know they only eat fish? Thank you for asking. Well, because we scoop their poop. Right? I know. I hear a couple of you going, you, which I think means you tell me more. Okay, we'll talk about poop scooping in a little bit. Good job. This group of whales spends about half their life looking for food. These animals have their own language. In other words, the southern resident language is not like any other killer whale language on the planet. I'll share some of their calls with you. And sadly, uh, as you may know, these animals are endangered, which of course means there are not many of them left. 
In fact, as of this morning, we're down to 78 southern resident killer whales left on the planet. So it's not a lot. Uh, if you want to help these whales, you can go to the Killer Whale Tales website. You can actually download a game to play at home, and you can actually help protect these whales at your home. And I know some of you are thinking, but I live a long way from where these whales swim, but you guys also probably live in salmon habitat. And since this whale's only eating salmon, even though you're nowhere near these whales, the fish that are in your neighborhood are actually feeding the whales that are just off to my right here. Okay. So we're gonna play a game right now. So what I need everyone to do is, as teachers, I need you to pick one person who is going to represent your whole class. I'm gonna start asking you some questions in a minute. Your class can totally help that one person, but it's just easier for me if I can talk to one person face to face. So I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to get yourself a science representative and we'll get started. Okay. Okay. Uh, raise your hand if your classes are ready to go. If if the teachers pick somebody, raise your hands. That way, I know all the classes are ready. We can get started. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's get started. So I actually have a re I actually have an assistant as well. Her name's Clara. Clara, step on in. Everybody say hi, Clara. So uh, Clara here is on what we call a scientific field trip. She's actually skipping school back in Montana. Her class is online with us right now. And uh, what's your teacher's name? What's what? Miss Swellen, let me uh, assure you that Clara has been working very hard on everything you've assigned her. I've been working her really hard at the park. She's been cleaning brush, clearing trails, and learning a whole lot about the entire ecosystem here. So when she comes back, I'm sure she'd be glad to write up a report for you, do a presentation, perhaps do an interpretive dance or song. I don't know, but I'd be asking her, okay? Okay, great. So here's what we're going to do. Good. Clara and I are going to be asking you orca-related questions. If your class thinks they can answer these questions, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll call on one class. If that class can answer the question correctly, they're going to earn one of those orca trading cards. But not only do they earn the card, if you are correct, every classroom right now that's participating also wins cards. So you're working as a scientific team to play the game. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you all. Okay, they got it. All right, let's get started. Okay, here comes the first question. And Allie, what uh, class should go to? We're going to go ahead and start with Mrs. Swetland's class. Mrs. Swetland's class, we're coming to you. Are they in Montana? Uh, yeah. We're in Montana. Uh, Missoula, the garden spot. Okay, so here comes question number one. Here it comes. Go ahead. Oh, wait, I need the microphone. Okay, here we go. Okay, go for it. Today you will be playing... Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. What is the name of the group of endangered whales that spend a majority of their lives in the... Puget Sound. Puget, Puget Sound Salish Sea. Okay, do you guys know the group of the endangered killer whales that happen to make their home right here at the park? We've been talking about it all day. Yes. Do you remember? Can we tell Sophia? The Southern Resident Killer Whales. Okay, Sophia, nice enough. The Southern Resident Killer Whales. Okay, you just said Southern Resident Killer Whales. Um, Clara, is she correct? Yes. She is. All right, give yourselves a hand because you have learned every single one. <laughs> Nicely done. Good job, Sophia. Hey, Sophia, we'll come back to you in a minute. You are correct, guys. The group of Killer Whales that spends the most of their time here near Lime Kiln State Park, we call them Southern Resident Killer Whales. Okay, let's see if we can earn another card. Uh, Kathleen, where are we going? We are going to go to New Mexico to Cecilia Pincombe's class. Wow. Miss Pincombe, can you hear us? Yes. 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 Oh, okay, good. Who's your, who's your representative? Damien. Damien. Okay, Damien. Here comes the question from Clara. Clara, go for it. What are the five basic needs of the endangered southern resident killer whales? Oh, good question. So, Damien, can your class tell me all five things that these animals get from their habitat in order to survive? You need to get all five. 
You can talk to your classmates too if you need to. Oh, Water, food. Water, food. Sat fish. Okay. Water is correct. They need it to swim in and to drink. Uh, food is correct. Is salmon. I heard somebody say air. So that's right. Food, shelter, I'm sorry, food, water, and air. There's two more. One of them begins with shh and ends with elter. Shelter. Good. And the last one. Do you think you know what the last one is? It begins with an S. Salmon? No, it's not salmon. No, we said food already. Here, I'm, I'm going to have Clara help me out. See if you can tell me right. Can you see Clara okay? Yeah. Watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a clue. Okay, let me put my, I'm gonna put my hat on backwards. Okay, Claire, don't move. I'm not gonna touch you, but watch this. Okay, Damien, you watching? What does Clara need right now more than anything? <laughs> does she look uncomfortable, Damien? <laughs> Absolutely, right? And I can give her safety by giving her more. Space. Space, you got it. Give yourselves a hand. You earned an Orca trading card. Good job. Okay, you are correct. These animals need food, shelter, air, water, and space. And I think you can see why they're endangered. Because if they don't have enough food, their shelter, air, and water are being affected by pollution. And the underwater is really loud. These animals can't hunt. So you mess with their five basic needs, and I think you can see why they are endangered. All right, Damien, nicely done. Kathleen, what class are we going to next? We are going to go to Mrs. Stillwater's class in Yakima. Oh, uh, Mrs. Stillwater, are you there? We are here. Oh, uh, Mrs. Stillwater, who's your representative? It's Theo. Theodore. Theodore Corona. Theodore. All right, Theodore. Yeah. Say hi to Clara, Theodore. Hello, Clara. <laughs> Clara. <laughs> That's Clara. Okay. Here comes your here comes your question to your classroom, Theodore. Here it comes. If you were a southern resident killer whale, how would you get those five basic needs met? Ooh, so if you were a whale, how do they get their food, their water, their shelter, and their space? Two possible answers here, Theodore. Can your class come up with it? Class. Please come up with it. <laughs> I have no idea. Um you. Um, being in blue? What? Being in groups? Being in groups. You're right. That's one answer. The pod can definitely help them get their needs met. But let's say the pod is really spread out. What else could the individual animal do? Him. What? Use teamwork. But if they're in well, right. That's the, that's the same thing, right? The pod helping them. But what if the pod is really spread out? Maybe they're on the other side of the strait. Can these animals get their own basic needs met? Could they hunt? Yeah, go ahead, Theodore. Yeah, they could. Um, they could hunt. They could probably try to find food. And for air, they could go up out of the water. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so hey, Theodore, do me a favor. Yes. Would you pat your pat your hand on your back? You did a good job. You just earned everyone listening another orca card. Good job. Nicely done, Theodore. Good job. Okay, you are right, uh, Mrs. Stillwater's class. These animals can do these things by themselves, but as we said earlier, this group of killer whales spends a lot of the time with their family because they're hunting together and they're helping each other get their basic needs met. Good job. Okay, Kathleen, where are we going for question four? We are going to go to Mrs. Records' class. I think it's Mrs. Records. Mrs. Records, Mrs. Donovan, are you there? Say, say hi. Hi. Okay. Hey, hi, guys. So, uh, where are you at? What's what's? Here? Can you tell me what city you guys are in? Um, we are in Washington. Vancouver, Washington. Oh, you're down in the Coob. Nice. Vancouver. Okay. Hey, my friend. What's your name? Who am I talking to? Omari. Uh, Omari Smith Miles. Hey, Amari Smith-Miles, how you doing? Good. 
Good. Okay, Amari, here comes the question to your class. Let's see if you can earn everyone from New Mexico to Montana to Washington another card. Okay, here you go, Claire. What's the question? How do you and the uh, southern resident killer whales get others to help them? Amari, does your class know how a whale might let another whale know that it needs something? By um by talking or using echolocation. You are absolutely right. Amari, jump up and down because you just Nicely done. Okay, Amari, we're going to come back to you in a few minutes, but you guys are right. They do communicate. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to share with you seven of the calls that the southern resident killer whales make. So what I would like you to do is if you have a piece of paper and a pencil or maybe your teacher can write it on the chalkboard or the whiteboard or whatever technological board you're using, I'll share with you seven calls that they make. I'll tell you the pod or pods that make them. And I'll give you a little easy way to remember each call. I'm going to have you memorize these calls because in a couple minutes, I'm going to be asking you if you can identify them. And if you can do this correctly, it's possible that everybody listening today could earn up to 10 total Orca cards each. Okay, sound good? All right, let's get started. So the first two calls that I want to teach you today are J-Pod calls. We have three pods that make up the Southern Resident Kilauea community. And the first pod that we're going to talk about today is J-Pod. So J-Pod has two calls that we often associate with them, S2I and S4. So those are boring science names. So S2I, I actually call the screaming baby call. So if you listen closely, you're going to hear a whale going, wah, wah. Here comes S2I. See if it doesn't sound like a screaming baby. I'm going to play it for you three times. Here it comes again. One last time. Go ahead and dab if you heard those calls. They did. Okay, good. All right, so if I hear a screaming baby, I know that's the S2I call, and I know that that's one of the calls that J-Pod uses. Okay? So raise your hand if you have that memorized so I can move on to the next one. Okay, they do. Okay, good. So now we're going to go to S4, and this is a very special call. And I think my dad is actually in Colorado, in Denver, listening right now. So I'm going to, uh, uh, this is a tribute to my father. Listen closely. I call this the daddy call. S4, because my daddy, I've frequently heard him making these sounds. Here comes S4. Listen three times. Here it comes. And again. And again. Raise your hand if you heard the whales go. Nice. Go ahead and wave your hands in the air if you heard your dad make that sound this morning. Nice. Hey, when he brings you out to the park here at Lime Kiln, tell him to go sit in the water by the lighthouse because he could talk to J-Pod. Okay. Raise your hand if you have both of those calls memorized, those J-Pod calls. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, let's go to K-Pod. Uh, so we have uh, another pod in the area called K-Pod, and K-Pod is really easy to remember because K-Pod calls sound like kitty cats. So the first call I want to play for you today is S16. Listen closely. You're going to hear one kitty cat, okay? You're going to hear one kitty cat go, meow. Here comes S16. I'll play it again. And last time. Wave one finger in the air if you heard the one kitty. Okay, sweet. Let's go to S17. This is two kitty cats. Okay, listen, you're going to hear a meow, meow. Here we go. I'll play it again. And last time. Hold up two fingers if you heard the two kitties. All right. All the classes are chiming in. Okay, the last pod we're going to talk about today is the biggest pod in the area. We call them L-Pod, one of my favorite pods. And I think the calls are pretty easy to remember because both S19 and S37 are human-like noises. So if you listen to S19, you're going to hear what I think sounds like a hiccup. Here comes the hiccup. 
And again. And last time. Good. And I'll play for you S37. I call this the upset tummy call. Listen, it's two parts. It sounds like someone's got a little rumbly in the tumbly. And it sounds like somebody might have a little um, gas. See if you don't agree. Here it comes. And last time. All right. Raise your hand if you've memorized both S19 and S37. We good, Kathleen? All right. The last call I want to teach you today is S1, Southern Resident Killer Whale call number one. It's the call most frequently made around here. Uh, what do you say, Claire? Yeah, I love this oh, Clara loves this call. Okay, so here it comes. I call it the cowboy call because to me it sounds like a whale going, yee-haw. Okay, here comes S1. See if you agree. Here comes yee-haw. Again. Last time. Hey, if you heard the yee-haw, go ahead and make the cowboy uh, lasso thing so I know you know S1. Yeah, baby. Okay, good. All right, so um, let's quickly review just so we know you have them. All right, Clara. S2I sounds like a what? Screaming baby. Good. S4 sounds like my? Dad. Good. Both of those are J-Pod calls. Uh, S16 is how many kitties? One. S17 is? Two. S19 sounds like a? And S37 sounds like I got a rumbly in my? Nice. And the last one, your favorite call, S1, sounds like what? Cowboy. All right. Good. Okay, uh, hey, uh, so Claire, do you think they're ready to play the game? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go around the horn again. Teachers, have your um, student ready to go. We will um, call them forward if you guys can answer not only the pod that's making these noises, as well as the S number. We're going to give you an orca card, and then we're going to do a really special treat at the end of the game. Okay? All right, uh, Kathleen, where do you want to go first? Yeah, we're going to start with Mrs. Eslick's class. Mrs. Eslick's yeah. class, are you there? Where are you? Where are you? Richmond. Tri-Cities. Okay. Yes, we're here. Oh, you're in the Tri-Cities. Okay. Great. So who's your student representative, please? Go ahead, Nicola. Um, my name's Connor. Okay, Connor, here you go. I'll play the call for you twice. You and your class must tell me the pod that made it, J's, K's, or L's, and give me the S number. If you get both of those, you earn everyone a card. Here it comes, Connor. Again. All right, Connor, what does your class think? Um, uh, our class says all of the pods, and it's S1. Okay, Connor, guess what? Hey, Claire, is he right? Yes, he is. All right, give him applause. You're absolutely correct. Nicely done. Good job, Tri-Cities. Nicely done. Kathleen, where are we going now? Let's go to Mrs. Purcell's class. Mrs. Purcell's class. Where are you all at? Post Falls. Oh, Post Falls. Post Falls. Post Falls. All right. Post Falls, are you there? Yeah. There they are. Okay, who's my representative in Post Falls? Mason. Mason. Okay, Mason, listen closely. This one's a little tricky, so put your super Mason. listening ears on. Here we go. Ooh, two parts. Tracy, do you know? Can your class tell me the pod and the S number? L-pod S37. Okay, I heard L Pod S thirty seven. Uh, what do you think, Clara? Are they right? Look at that! Give yourselves applause. You're absolutely correct. Nicely done. All right, good job. Okay, let's go to the next one. Hey, Kathleen, whose class are we going to next? Um, let's go back to New Mexico, but Jeff, I also have to let you know we've got somebody on from Minnesota on the RSS, and they've been answering correctly. Let's go to Minnesota. Kathleen, what, uh, do we know anything about their school or their name? Um, I don't. I just know they're from Minnesota. All right, Minnesota. 
all of Minnesota were going to you. So this is for Minnesota. Minnesota, listen closely. We'll play the calls for you twice. You go ahead and type in your answer. And if Minnesota can get the question right, awesome. We're going to give everyone cards. All right, here we go, Minnesota. This is for you. Who is this? J's, K's, or L's? All of them or none of them? Okay, Minnesota, what do you think? They're typing, and we also have New Mexico, so New Mexico can maybe help Minnesota. Oh, wow, New Mexico could help yeah, Minnesota? Think. All right, let's see what Wolf thinks. Screaming babies. Screaming babies. Well, is it screaming baby or is it yeah. baby cat? It's a cat. 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 Okay, I hear a lot of people with opinions. Okay. Minnesota says J. Pod S2I. Oh, the screaming baby. Hey, Minnesota, listen really closely again. I'm going to play it again. This one's, a, I'll play it. Listen, it's not, well, let's see. No. Is it two or one? Is it two cats or one cat? Uh, Lots of good suggestions. Did Minnesota chime in, Kathy? It's Mrs. Russell's class. It's a third grade class, and they have not answered again. Oh, Mrs. Russell's okay. class. Come but, on. Oh, they're right. S4. They're saying the S4, the daddy call? No. Hmm. It's a okay. long way to Minnesota. It is a long way to Minnesota. You know what? Let, let's uh, let's let all the schools chime in. Other schools, just say what you think it is. Everybody at the same time. Go. S17. I hear a lot of S-17s. Yeah. So you know what, Minnesota? The whole nation's going to help. We're going to work as a pod and check it out. S-17 is the correct answer. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. Good. They That's finally good. got it. Okay, oh, they did. Okay, maybe <laughs> yeah, it just took yeah, a while yeah. for them to get here. Yeah. Okay, hey, uh, Kathleen, since we have this little exciting thing potentially happening here, let's go to sure. the hardest question. Can I go back to Sophia out at uh, uh, Clara's school here? That's right. Okay, you bet. Okay, Sophia, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, Sophia, uh, we've got a uh, the hardest one yet, and uh, Clara has told me a lot about you. She seems to imply that she knows, you know, you like her tight, like your best of friends. She feels fully comfortable that you can do this. Does that make you feel better to hear that? <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Sophia, here's the deal. Your class is going to represent everyone listening right now. Minnesota, New Mexico, the Tri-Cities in Washington, down in Vancouver, anyone listening. Sophia, I'm going to play for you a recording that lasts about 30 seconds. If you can tell me everything that all the whales you hear, is it J's, is it K's, or L's, you're going to win Orchid trading cards, and I'm going to give you a super special bonus. Are you ready to go, Sophia? Yes. Okay. Okay, Sophia, here it goes. Listen closely. Can your class tell me? Which pod or pods they hear in this recording? All right, Sophia. Pod or pod? Yes. Go ahead. J-Pod. Just J's? You only hear, uh, uh, woo, Clara just went, ooh, ooh. You know, Clara thinks that it might be more. Sophia, do you need to hear more? Yeah, yeah sure. Yes. Okay, I'll play some more. And all of you that are chiming in, listen, because I'll come back to all of you to get the answer. Want to change your answer? Yes, we we think that it is J Pod and S sixteen. Okay, so you heard J's and K's. Clara, do you agree? Uh, not completely. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Clara thinks you're missing one. Hey, Clara, what do you think they're missing? Oh, I think they're missing one of the pods. L Pod? Maybe, yeah. Hey, Sophia, uh, Clara here thinks it's all three pods. Do you want to go with J's and K's, or you want to go with Clara? I want to go with Clara. All right. 
Guess what? Everyone start cheering because you just got 10 orchid cards each no matter where you're at. Okay. Hey, you know what? I've got a special bonus for all of you. They're moving to the left. Uh, we've got a bunch of dolls porpoises in the area right now, so we're going to switch over to our camera. Uh, we'll talk a little more about the cards, but can you see the porpoises? Watch closely. You love the ocean. <laughs> we never see the ocean. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nicely done. So you should see these dolls porpoises. See if you can't find the, the blackish body but the whitish fin. Oh my I'm sorry, Aaron, did you say you see something else? Okay, we also, Erin thinks she sees what is called a hybrid, which means you have a harbor porpoise and a doll porpoise mix. A whole bunch of them right off the park. This is very rare to have them this close. Yeah, it's very rare to have them this close. It's because you guys did so good in the game. Yeah. Yeah, they're right here coming to celebrate your victory and your orca cards. So these animals are about six to eight feet long. They're not as big as killer whales, not even close. Uh, the shape of their teeth. Um, are very different than those of a killer whale, um, but it's pretty unique to see these whale, uh, these porpoises this close. And I, how many do we have, Aaron? All right, so we've got about twelve to fifteen animals out here at this point. So I tell you what, guys, uh, Allie's going to keep focusing on these porpoises, this large group. But I'll also let you ask some orca-related questions. If you have some questions about the park or what we're seeing now, let's go ahead and uh, just go around the horn and we'll answer some questions. So Sophia's class, we'll stick with you for the first question. Do you guys have any questions about the park, about whales, about why Claire is skipping school for several days? Any questions like that? <laughs> Michael, if you have a question, you want to come up here a little closer, Michael, so they can see you? How much fun are you having? <laughs> oh, a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, hold on. I, I'm assuming you're asking Clara. Clara, what'd you say? Oh, I'm having a lot of fun up here. Hey, Clara, who is that? She's having a lot of fun. That's good. And oh. Hey, one last question. So, uh, Clara has actually, and her sister, both uh, named a harbor seal. Named, they called it Floyd. I don't know why, but we're going to zoom in on Floyd because he's in front of the lighthouse here today, too. Okay, uh, go ahead. One more question for Clara or me from Montana. Go okay, ahead. Okay, Clara, have you seen uh, any more killer whales in the south um, region? Killer whales? Um, I have not seen a whale yet, but... But we tried yesterday, right? Yeah, we right? tried yesterday. We tried a lot. Yeah, we actually had a couple oh. of what we call transient killer whales yesterday. Uh, they're different than southern residents. I mean, they look different. They're bigger, uh, but they, they hunt marine mammals. So Claire and I had binoculars yesterday, and I saw them. And as soon as I handed the binoculars, the whales played hide and seek. And Claire's like, I can't see them. I can't see them. I said, give me the binoculars back. And as soon as I got them back, I saw them. I gave her the binoculars back, but she didn't see them. So they are in the area, but they're kind of hiding from her. Yeah. But we're working yeah. on it. All right. Kathleen, where can we go for another question? Uh, let's go to Mrs. Purcell's class. Mrs. Purcell's class, do you have any questions? We do. We have one right here. Okay, okay go, go for it. How long do whales live for? Okay, good question. How long do whales live for? Well, the average lifespan for a female southern resident killer whale is between 40 and 60 years old. The lifespan for a male killer whale is around 20 years old. Now, we have seen female killer whales live to be almost 100 in this area, but we've only seen the males grow to be about 60 in this area. So average is quite low, but we do have individuals that are living very, very long lives, just like humans. Great. Kathleen. Great. We had a question on the RSS from Mrs. Bessonen's class um, about how many teeth do killer whales have? Ooh, how many teeth do they have? You want to take a guess, Clara? Uh, I don't know at all. What a great science answer. She said, I don't know. That's a great answer. Scientists often don't know. On average, it's between 48 to 52 teeth. So good question. 
great. One more off the RSS feed was from Minnesota. And um, this is from Alexandra in Minnesota. Why are fins different on males and females? Oh, sorry, that's from Sebastian. It's Sebastian's question in Minnesota. Why are, say that again, Kathleen, what? Why are there, why is there a difference between males and females' fins? Why? Ooh, that's a good question. Why are human males often taller than females? Um, you know what? Let's give them a scientific answer, which is what? I don't know. Yeah. Don't really know. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, fin uh, fin size when it comes to reproducing. Maybe the bigger fins on the males say, "Hey, I'm stronger. Uh, I've got good genes. Let's make a baby that has good genes." That could be a possibility. Um, that's a great question, though. You know, I don't know either. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. And so, uh, what's your teacher's name? Um, Sweatland. Sweatland. Yeah. Miss Swetland, uh, Claire will have an answer for you when she comes back. I'll have her get on the research books as soon as we're done. <laughs> Kathleen. How about Mrs. Eslick's class? Mrs. Eslick's Perfect. class. Do you have a question? Yes. We're biting at the bit. Yes, we have a question. <laughs> we want to know, do you know what, how our adopted orca J22's son, Double Stuff, died? Uh, yes. That's a really great question. So they asked um, how, uh, so we have a J pod out here, obviously. J22, her son died over the winter. He was actually uh, hit by a boat. So, uh, it was, it was, yeah. And it was hard because uh, he's roughly 20 years old or so. Yeah. He's roughly 20 years old or no, so. It's a, I don't lost. know if we're in this session. You might in the next session at nine o'clock. Yeah, so so I'm just gonna wait. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll repeat that. Yeah, he died. Uh, he got hit by a boat. Um, his body did wash up, so we know that it was called blunt trauma, which means you know he obviously got hit by something. Uh, they're still investigating it. They're still looking into it. But yeah, a very unfortunate event that he got uh, struck by a boat. Good question, though. Sad, because he was one of my favorite whales, too, J34. Kathleen, go ahead. Uh, Mrs. Eslick, do you have another uh, question in your class? Yes, we have so many. <laughs> but we'll take what we can get. Hold on. Our class wanted to know what your education was and how you like studying out in the field and what class they might be able to focus on as they are going through middle school and high school to be able to do something similar to what you do. Okay, that's a really great question and I'm going to assume they're asking me, Clara? Yes. Okay, they're asking me. Um, so if I'm you, well, the first question is, is I would start to study something that I'm passionate about. So if you're excited about marine mammals and biology, uh, focus on science, uh, definitely focus on math. Um, but that said, I know people are interested in these animals that focus on art. They like to sing, they like to write songs, they create uh, photography or films about these animals. So I think the most important thing is to ask yourself, what are you really interested in? And if you want to be a scientist about it, math, science, biology, all sorts of things like that. I even know people who are into geography, mapping the underwater terrain out here, who also work with marine mammals, but their interest is in the rocks that are under the water. If you want to get into these animals for artistic reasons, yeah, study, study theater, study music. Um, it's really mostly what you're passionate about. I personally went to uh, the University of Colorado in Boulder. My degree, my undergraduate degree is actually in drama. Uh, my program is all about storytelling and blending science with storytelling. So I kind of do a little bit of everything, and I would encourage you to do the same. And, spe and speaking of science and art, we're going to wrap up here because uh, my good friend Clara here has been working with uh, this singer. I don't remember her name. What's the singer's name? Oh, Adele. Clara, uh, Clara and Adele have been on the island. They've worked up a little song based on the, uh, Adele's song, Hello. She's going to sing you her song. She's going to show you how science and art can come together, and then we'll wrap up and we'll say goodbye to you all. And teachers, before we sing the song, make sure we have your addresses, your snail mail addresses, 
including you folks online, so that we can send your students the ORCA trading cards. So again, send us your snail mail addresses if we don't have them, plus the number of students that are participating today. So Clara, are you ready to show them how art and science come together? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. Hello, it's me. From pollution to extinction, it all affects me. Every single little thing. Hello from the ocean deep. Stop taking all the salmon that I eat. I need those to live and thrive so I can stay alive some more. Hey everybody, how about a hand for Claire for putting science in the heart together?